Hello, this is Caleb Jones. Um, I studied uh, game art and design at Art Institute of Atlanta and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how I go about modeling in Maya and uh, the preferences that I use. Now the first thing you want to do just to be on the same page with me is to go to uh, your uh, documents folder and there's a file named Maya you can either move it to another location or just delete it. It's basically temporary settings and default project uh, folder directories for anything having to do with Maya. A lot of times if you uh, run into problems when you're modeling in Maya, things just seem kind of funky, you can uh, just delete that settings and preferences folder and it will clear up a lot of issues. So. Basically, uh, after that's done, I'm going to start Maya up and I'm going to show you how to set it up uh, in order to do um, uh, some efficient modeling. So, by default, it's um, set up in, in uh, kind of a cluttered way, in, in my opinion. But uh, you have all these buttons for all these maneuvers, which uh, <coughs> can be easily accessed in uh, a whole lot uh, different way that's more intuitive. Um, so the first thing that I will do is I say hide everything because I don't want to use that. You're going to use a marking menu, which will make you a better modeler. Um, so I go under preferences and uh, under display. I turn off this background gradient. I turn off the view cube. Um, this one's kind of important. You know, kick yourself later if you don't do it. You uh, turn infinite on do, undo on. And uh, under interface, I like to hit polygons just so up here, in case I do grab something from up there, uh, my polygon options show up. And uh, that's all there. Now, one thing that is kind of important to me to have is the status line because it has options like snap, your render option, um, you know, just uh, in, in these uh, fields are going to be pretty important. So <coughs> after that, uh, you can hit plugin manager because if you typically work with uh, object files, which are very standard type files, um, you need to say that you want to be able to uh, export them. It just loads a plugin into Maya's memory uh, and you can say automatically do it. Um, so in order to start showing you something, um, I'm going to have to create a primitive. I'm going to turn off interactive creation because uh, the way that I model, I, I don't really prefer it. Um, but we have a cube right here. Uh, is now inserted at the origin and uh, just to get the uh, shader to show up I'm gonna click on this high quality button here twice and uh, I like to see the wireframe so I'm gonna click on the wireframe up there and then I'll click anywhere else and it shows up as far as how to orient yourself in 3d space uh, you're gonna left click and uh, hold alt and it will allow you to rotate around this object uh, you're going to right click while holding Alt and it's going to allow you to zoom in. Uh, if you hold the middle button and click, you can pan. Uh, hold the Alt in the middle button and you can pan. Uh, so basically, um, after you put in a 3D primitive, you can right click on it to say in what mode you wish to interact with it. So if I say vertices, it's talking about each individual point in space. If I say edge, it's going to be referring to multiple points too, uh, or a loop of edges. Um, object mode is everything that is uh, grouped together. So basically, um, if you want to see this, which it could be confusing to bring it up, but uh, it is under your outliner. Uh, there will be everything will be grouped together. So the difference between an object though is uh, this might this this will show you this will kind of explain. So I inserted another cube. I'm going to press W to translate this cube in 3D space. 
So the one that was selected was the one that was inserted in, and I'm going to turn it. Uh, these are two separate ones uh, in the outliner. Now if I um, press spacebar, it's going to bring up this menu, and I can say mesh, combine. And now it's just grouped them uh, together. It's, it's created attributes that connect these two. So now this is an object. Um, that might be a bit too confusing, but either way, it might come in handy later. So in order to start modeling, um, I, uh, I kind of uh, you might want to orient yourself with uh, the viewports, which you press spacebar and it will bring up all the ortho orthographic views in case you uh, need to work in one of those. You press, you hover over the uh, viewport and you press spacebar and it will drop you in there. Um, and if you want to quickly get into where you're working, you press F uh, while hovering over it and it will frame everything. So, enough with that. I'm going to press spacebar, go back into the perspective viewport, and from here um, I can select faces, which is a um, another uh, um, selection, basically. You have vertex, edges, objects, and faces. Those are going to be the typical ones that you would use when uh, quickly modeling in Maya. Uh, just to explain uh, how I go about modeling, uh, I usually will grab a face and uh, I'll press shift and then right click. While holding right click it brings up the marking menu and uh, I'll hit extrude face which this is going to tell Maya um, to do what's called an extrusion on uh, this face basically. So I'll hit the uh, scale manipulator up at top, this is a uh, transform component manipulator, which it does it based on the normal. I'll show you a little bit about transformation later, but this one is different than your typical one. Uh, basically, you have three types of uh, three types of uh, transformation tools, which uh, I'll illustrate here. You can select some vertices and uh, W is your standard transformation uh, for moving. You can uh, click on the little arrows and you can move it. You can click on this box and it's kind of a free free movement. Um, or you can, uh, each arrow is gonna kinda uh, stay on its um, orthogonal uh, uh, translation. Um, so, W is just the move translation. You can uh, click anywhere in the empty space and hold down shift. You click anywhere with the middle mouse button and as long as you start moving either horizontal, vertical, or uh, it's kind of hard to do depth. You kind of have to turn. But uh, by holding shift and then the middle mouse button you can move things in that way. So I could say I want to be in an object mode and I can move this kind of as a gesture instead of a real specific uh, operation. And then uh, E is going to be my rotation manipulator and uh, these are just based on uh, orthogonal planes or orthographic uh, kind of rotation but this the outer ring is going to be based on your camera so I could do something funny like that and it's going to rotate based on that. And then R is going to be your scale uh, tool. So I could select an edge and I could scale that in if I would like. Uh, basically options are unlimited. So, um, But if you ever um, find yourself wanting to use uh, um, a more complex operation scale like I'm holding shift uh, right clicking and I'm just gonna bevel this to get a, a funny angle just to make a point here uh, I'm gonna grab some vertices and since I have the normal move tool which is it's what you translate around in, I can uh, come in here and I can say I want to set my movement to a face and there you go 
but you also have a, a lot of different options like the uh, normal uh, normals average of all the points that I've selected there's basically uh, tons of options there so um, back to back to this um, now you can quickly rough in uh, something I'm just undoing everything to get back to a square uh, you can quickly rough in uh, some complex shapes using these techniques you hit face shift right click extrude and um, I'm going to hit the scale manipulator bring it back down this is moving everything based on this faces normal which uh, you know that could mean something to you or not but uh, you uh, instead of having to shift and right click again and say extrude face Maya is going to remember my last operation so I can just hit G and that tells Maya to do the same thing that I just did now I could use these uh, these you just click on the word and you move left to right and it will kind of uh, do the value um, so there you can basically do that and uh, say that I wanted to give some more definition vertically I can shift right I'd have to select an edge here to do what I'm about to do shift right click insert edge loop tool and I can basically insert those and to tell Maya to quit whatever it's doing uh, just like you did with G to say repeat it if you're um, if you're see because I, I tried to select edges but it's it's still laying down edge loop tool uh, edge loops wherever I click and and that's not what I want so I'm gonna press Q uh, do a different type of selection click it uh, clear sometimes with your edges it will some of them will be selected if you select them all and then just click anywhere it will get rid of it uh, that can be a pain when you're trying to do certain things but I can click on these faces and shift right click ex or, uh, yeah shift right click extrude the face I can hit G again and uh, you know I can do it however I, I typically like to do the uh, gesture based stuff because it's uh, it's very simple you can just kind of fly around and, and, and do everything um, so say and I can click a face click another face and then double click that second face and it usually will wrap around sometimes depending on the order that you click them in it, it doesn't do that but I can extrude all of these at once and I'm gonna hit that manipulator to get the, the larger one or what's best here is this blue is uh, this blue one is gonna move it along the face normal well they all do but blue is uh, the axis that I wanted to move them on which was Z uh, so it just moved everything based on its normal outward uh, I'm gonna right click I'm gonna say face um, extrude I can basically hit G uh, extrude again and uh, now I could you know shrink that up if I wanted and come back in here select a face extrude just a moment and um, here we are so I'm gonna insert some edge loops and connect these two towers and I'll show you how to do that and then that will be all um, okay so I will take these faces I will extrude this face out here face extrude face and they don't line up but for intents and purposes I will show you this I'm gonna select a face I'm gonna hit delete um, select face here and hit delete and uh, one by one I can select 
this vertice to this vertice and then I can shift right click say merge vertices and it's going to kind of bring the little menu out again because uh, it's all node based and then I'm going to hit merge and that's going to combine those two um, same with I, I could probably just press G at this point and uh, G and G and then at this point those are connected so I could double click on one edge and it's going to try to select all around the edge loop and then I can press control and say uh, down to edge loop utilities to edge loop and delete and it has connected that for me basically so at that point I can continue doing my crazy extrusions into space and continue adding edge loops and I don't know what we're building but it kind of looks like a bus stop or something yeah there we go it's like a bus stop how about that didn't even mean to make it um, but at this point <clears throat> you're ready to save whatever work you did you can uh, export your selection as an OBJ to your desktop. Um, first, what you'll want to do is uh, go to set your project, which will take it out of your default My Documents folder, and it will create it wherever you specify. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and uh, right click, say New Folder, and it's going to be Demo then I'm going to hit set and create default workspace uh, project window it's already brought up the current project folder that I was specifying here is all the uh, possible things that um, Maya or here's all the directories Maya can create by default to store the things when you save a file I'm just going to hit accept because the default values are good then I'm going to say save scene as and it's already filled in here the directory to the scene folder and I'm gonna say uh, demo a a and it's gonna save it as uh, my binary and then uh, I'm gonna select this object and file export selection uh, I'm gonna go back and uh, I will just save it under something else like uh, assets station and as an OBJ you don't have to do it it's just that OBJ can be used in uh, many different 3D programs so it's kind of a, a good one and there you have it uh, some interesting box modeling techniques thank you very much